heroes of the Armageddon. You have withstood the evil savagery of the orcs, and they having nothing left for you to fear. So raise high the black banners of vengeance. Now is our time. Sebastian Yarek needs no special introduction. A hero of the Imperium, legend of Armageddon and the savior of Hades Hive. To all who don't know him, let me briefly summarize his story. Sebastian was raised by his grandfather, who was a retired Imperial Guardsman. He taught Yarek different tricks and the ways of the Imperial Guard. Sebastian learned the Orc language from a raider who supposedly was a prisoner of the Orcs for some time. This gave him the advantage against his future enemy. His hatred toward Orcs grew after his home planet was invaded and he had to fight for his life using his learned skills and his wit. A few months after being found and still as a young man, he was sent to the Scola Progenia where he studied to become a commissar. Many, many years after his graduation, while performing his last task as a commissar, Armageddon was attacked by none other than Gasgul himself. Being the expert on battling orcs, Sebastian quickly asserted that they are facing an enemy more cunning and tenacious than previous orcs. He ordered the planet's astropaths to send a distress message for help, and for doing this he was moved to Hades Hive. The orcs, as suspected, overrun other cities and have directed their forces to Hades. Yarek nonetheless proved a solid tactician and inspired his soldiers to fanatical acts of bravery and resolve. It is here that his legend was born. Gasgul, frustrated of the high of Hades' defiance, sent one of his strongest war bosses, Ugulhar, to combat Yarek. The commissar, while manning the outer hive defense line, took the war boss to single combat in which he lost his arm but decapitated the orc with his chainsword. Only after the other greenskins routed, he fell to the ground from his wounds. Yarek took his enemy's power claw and got it implanted, as well as an eye replacement in the form of a bionic laser. So was the myth of the old bell eye born. Gasgul took to the battle himself and both armies while combating, until the Imperial forces were relieved by the arrival of Space Marine forces, led by Commander Dante of the Blood Angels. The Space Marine offensive pushed the Orcs back, but it did not end it. Three years after the Second War of Armageddon, Yarek came back from retirement and took it upon himself to cleanse the surrounding worlds of Orcs. On the planet of Golgotha he met his enemies, but was defeated. After being tortured and enslaved, Sebastian started a revolt on the Space Hulk, and though he intended on detonating the Hulk, it did not happen. He woke up after the explosion and suffered a shock. He was once again fully clad in his uniform, power claw and laser eye reattached. Gasgul appreciated and praised him as an enemy and let him escape in a shuttlecraft to set up the defense of Armageddon once more. He stated that good enemies are hard to come by. Two weeks before the invasion, he came back to Armageddon and was appointed supreme commander of all of the Imperial forces. The battles were long and hard fought, but eventually the day was won. Unfortunately, Gasgul fled Armageddon and the following chase was conducted by Yarik and the Black Templars. Currently, it is unknown if Sebastian Yarek lives. The bell of lost souls on Terra is said to have rung for him, but it is not something proven. His fate is yet to be confirmed, but such rumors could negate his future models. Commissar Yarek had two miniatures. The first one, a bit wacky, was sculpted by none other than Jess Goodwin and presented in the White Dwarf 113 in 1989. The second model was introduced in the 2000 Codex Armageddon. Unfortunately, I could not find the sculptor. Please, if anybody knows this, let me know in the comments. This is the model how I got him. The paint job is good and what is really nice, somebody was really inspired by the original colors. 
it is always a very good point of reference to do that. But I wanted him to be a bit different. Nothing extraordinary, but maybe some different paints here and there. As it is a single model and a display one, I needed to focus on the metallics. Something I am not fond of, but still, NMM nonetheless. I have a really big soft spot for this miniature, as it is one of the first I have ever painted. I even found some photos of him. I will let you be the judge of the progress I have made in those three last years. The only removable part is the lower section of the power claw. Everything else is a solid block of metal. If I remember correctly last time, I have just glued it with super glue and this led to the part falling off even with the smallest shake. This time I wanted it to be more stable so I pinned it. As always, uh, I think of a point on one of the ends where I want the pin to go and just put a thick dot of black paint on the spot. Then I just stick the parts together dry and I have an ideal dot on both of the parts where I should drill. Just remember not to drill too deep on the smallest one. I went all the way through the metal and had to mask it later. After pinning, priming, black and white zenithal, I started experimenting with some colors, but as it is very often the case with my display models, the miniature got legs of its own and did exactly this. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Apparently this was even my facial expression, as till today I have no idea how it happened. Well, a lot of the paint fell off and I had to strip him and redo it again. I gave myself one day of rest and came up with a plan that could simplify my work, but make every second more effective. It was important as I was already a week in this project, so I opted for a ready base and pinned the model to it. There would be no zenithal and the black primer undercoat would get a layer of the black paint that I would use later. This is important as for example if your primer is satin and a black paint that you are using on the mini is matte, there will be a visible difference. I started with the mechanic arm as it was a big part of the model. The idea here was very simple. I took all of the paints that I wanted to use and watered them down one to one with water. This gave me a thick glaze. With this mix I could layer the paints in a few coats and still have a relatively smooth effect. As it turned out it was a good idea, but one I would not continue with later. It took less time than traditional glazing but still too long for the whole model to be finished in a 2 up to 3 afternoon sessions. I wanted to experiment with this and I did. Lesson learned for the future. To finish it up I did the purity seal, a nice detail giving the model lots of life. Then I went to the steel NMM. I started it with the same approach as previously but quickly changed it to regular layering. La 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 la. The only difference here was that normally I prepared 3, maybe 4 shades and this time I had more than 8. Such a color transition will make it much smoother and still give a nice overall look.
the boots, the gun casing, some minor details. They are all very important, but you have to decide which parts should attract the most attention and they, uh, which should not. Do them with care, but don't focus too much time on them. Make it rather a quick but a efficient job. The face of the model is always a place where your eyes rest on. Uh, give it some more time than on the other points. I took the quickest route though and left the shadows black and then put my base color and I used a pale skin shade to make some middle tones and then finished with the pale one. Alright, my dreaded enemy is here, gold and mm. So I started with covering all of the details that would be gold with a dark brown tone. I scanned the model a few times for them. This allowed me to see what to paint and uh, not to miss any details. And of course I forgot to paint some points on the cap gold, but this is not as much important. It holds up in the general overview of the model. One thing uh, that I have to focus immensely here uh, when it comes to any non-metallic metal. Edge highlights. This is the key here. Just do them. DO IT! They will take your metallics into a different level. Remember that you don't have to edge highlight everything with white. I used yellow for example for the red parts of the model. At this point I was more or less done with the model. The cape, then some minor details, painting the base with a metallic silver and washing it with some different colors that I had on my wet palette. The end was close ladies and gentlemen and with every brush stroke the model was looking better and better and making me more proud of it. Let's see the final result. Dearly beloved, let me present to you Commissar Yarik. He gave me a lot of trouble, but now when I look at him I am very happy that I didn't put him away after he fell and went on with this paint job. He came out really really nicely. Lots of details and points to practice some skills I need to improve. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment, I will really appreciate it. And don't forget to share, like and subscribe and see you in the next video.